Hey everyone, welcome to our channel after school. This is Gayatri Patel, your physics ma'am. Guys, how are you all? I hope you are doing well and also you are preparing for the boards really very well. And in this video, we are going to revise Human Eye and Colorful World, the full chapter revision in only one video. And at times like this, I mean, in revision time, you may not get uh, enough time to complete this video at a time, right? In one go. So in that case, you can do one thing that you can watch the video in 1.25x or 1.5x. And without wasting time, let's get started. So the first thing, the first uh, topic which we are going to uh, start in this chapter is least distance of distinct division. Now, what is this least distance? The name itself suggesting that it is the least. That means it is the minimum, right? And distance, which distance it is? The minimum distance of distinct vision. Distinct means clear. Okay. So the least distance of distinct vision means minimum distance of clear vision. Let's try to define it very clearly that least distance of distinct vision is nothing but the minimum distance from the human eye where we can uh, see an object clearly without any strain. That means, for example, this is our human eye and this is the objects, right? This is the distance from eye to uh, object, right? So, this distance is known as least distance of distinct vision and it should be the minimum distance from human eye where we can see it clearly. So this distance varies from human to human and also varies due to age. For example, if we talk about an adult who is very healthy, so his least distance of distinct vision. So we simply, uh, in order to write the full sentence, we can simply write LDDC. Okay, this distance is 25 centimeter for an adult. Okay, now this distance is varies in uh, younger kids and also elder people. For example, younger kids like uh, below 10 years uh, kids. Okay, younger ones. They have this least distance of distance of distinct vision as 7 to 8 centimeter. Yes, it is also centimeter but if it is for older people or the mean uh, above 60 years it will be one meter to two meters also okay because due to the muscles around the eye it may function properly in elder people okay older people but these are very flexible for younger ones right that is why they can see even if the object is very close to the eye and the next one is angle of vision. What is this angle? Simply, if we keep an object where, uh, from the, uh, at a certain distance from the eye and this object has both ends, right? So, with these both ends are making some angle with the eye, right? This angle is known as angle of vision. Got it? So, the angle made by both ends of the object with the eye is known as angle of vision. So it is generally of uh, 60 degrees. So it is same, almost same for all human beings, unlike least distance of distinct vision. So now this is about least distance and angle of vision, right? But now you may got one doubt that how this varies, how least distance of distinct vision varies from person to person and also due to age. So to get to uh, know about this, we need to discuss structure of human eye. So, in this, we are going to know what all are the parts uh, inside the eye and also they, it's uh, their functioning, right? So, first let's discuss the parts and we'll discuss about functioning and working. First, it is the uh, human eye generally in a shape of sp sphere, okay? It is of spherical shape, but the present, the current view, uh, which we you can, which you are seeing in the screen, is from this side. Okay, it is side view. It is a side cross section. Okay, now this first layer, the bulged out part 
here you can see right so this part is known as cornea okay it is known as cornea the fur the very first layer of the eye you can uh, see cornea of yourself too and behind this cornea we can see one uh, one more layer so this is known as aqueous humor i'll tell you what all are this and what's their importance and uh, functioning aqueous humor and behind this aqueous humor we have a, a combination of muscular diaphragm and the space between them right so this muscle is known as iris okay and the space between them is known as pupil fine and this uh, iris pupil combination is a uh, very interesting and we are going to discuss it in few minutes behind this combination we can see a human lens right eye lens we can consider it as eye lens right and you can see in the diagram that this eye lens is connected to some muscles right both uh, ends it is connected to some muscles these muscles are known as ciliary muscles these uh, muscles play an important role while uh, forming the uh, image now apart from some distance okay here from human eye to uh, from human eye about of 2.5 cm okay from 2.5 cm we can see a shape right a spherical uh, shape you can see so this is nothing but retina okay and this retina is also attached to one nerve this is known as optical nerve fine so these are all the important parts in the human eye now let's talk about their importance so let's start with cornea so cornea is the very first layer of the uh, uh, human eye as we have discussed right and what it do so simply so this cornea protects eye from outside dust pollution and everything right so it protects the eye the first layer and it is very small uh, layer okay and this is the bulged out part we can where, uh, which we can see uh, from the outside also and behind it we can see we have uh, a small layer here right from here to here so this layer is known as aqueous humor the name itself is saying that aqua aqua indicates liquid or fluid okay so here you can consider it as a fluid filled layer so what it uh, what its importance simple that uh, aqueous humor gives uh, uh, nutrients to cornea the outer layer okay and also it is also protects a uh, pupil and uh, iris too now let's talk about iris and pupil this iris is nothing but uh, it is a major it play it plays a key role in deciding the pupil size how i'll tell you for example a very bright light is coming into the eye now it uh, any light is entering into the eye through pupil so through pu pupil is the part through which light enters into the eye right so whenever light is entering if the light is very bright and high intensity then since our human eyes are very sensitive we cannot bear it so in order to protect our eye iris decreases the pupil size here here you can see this is the uh, size of the pupil here right so whenever a bright light is coming this pupil size is decreases and if a dim light is coming into the eye then we it uh, human eye uh, lens needs more light to uh, form the image right clear image of the object right so in order to uh, give a clear image iris uh, increases the pupil size to maximum right so this is how iris decides or controls the pupil's size and the pupil is the part through which light rays enters into the eye got it and also one more important point for iris that 
it gives color to human eye and you may see some people with brown eyes blue eyes green eyes gray eyes right so that color is given by iris so color uh, iris is the coloring uh, part in the eye now this ciliary parts will discuss about uh, after a few minutes okay after that after the behind this iris and uh, uh, pupils combination we can see this human eye uh, eye lens right so this eye lens receives the light from the pupil and forms the image on the uh, retina yes retina is the place where image forms okay eye lens forms the image so this retina uh, has separate uh, uh, speciality that whenever image forms on retina then only we can see the object clearly otherwise if it not formed if the image not formed on the retina or if the image formed in front of retina or behind the retina in both the cases we cannot see object clearly we can see a blur image of the object got it now in order to see so we uh, get to know that in order to see a clear object then the lens should form image on the retina got it and the distance between this retina and human lens is 2.5 cm got it now how do we get uh, uh, know about information about this image whether object whether the object is uh, blue or black or red what about color shape intensity and size how do we get all this information about uh, object that's given by uh, receptors optical receptors yes uh, this uh, retina contains millions of optical retin uh, receptors they are categorized two types one is cons and another one is rods so cons collects the information about color and rods collect the information about intensity so whenever image formed on the retina on that uh, area these cons and rods activates and collects the information about object and gives this information to optic nerve yes optic nerve receives the information about uh, image or object from cons and rods and transfers this image to brain now what brains do brain receive collects all the information from optic nerves and analyze this information after processing this gives a, a clear image of the uh, object got it so this is what happening inside the eye now i have given all the definitions here okay so you can pause the video and note it down all these uh, definitions these are of one or two lines and it will help you to remember uh, defini I mean uh, definitions and also it will help you to uh, remember for a very long time and not only this I have also given this retina optical optic nerves here optic nerves of the nerve cell they are more sensitive to bright light okay and this will give a color okay information about color and this rods rod gives uh, the information about uh, intensity okay how dim or how bright the light is got it yes so this is about eye okay now you may have got doubt that uh, in previous chapter where we have discussed about spherical lenses the chapter is refraction of light at curved surfaces spherical surfaces spherical lenses they we have learned that for every object distance lens forms image at a different distance right that means for every object distance we have a different image distance too but when it comes to uh, eyes so we well, irrespective of the object distance the retina or uh, eye lens forms only on the eye lens forms image only on the retina right but how come it is possible only here object distance is varying but the image distance is not varying what's happening here 
what makes it possible to watch the objects at all distances here the mystery clears so this is this uh, is done by ciliary muscles this process is known as accommodation accommodation so what's happening here simply the ciliary muscles are changing the focal length of the lens eye lens yes so this process of adjusting process of process of adjusting focal length is known as accommodation of lens and this is done by ciliary muscles so what what exactly is the ciliary muscles are doing is for example this is the object i mean this is human eye okay now somewhere very far the object is there right now the light rays coming from this object are parallel right so whenever parallel uh, rays of light falls on the lens then lens forms the image on the retina on the focus right now since this is the focus sorry so since this is the retina and this uh, the distance between them is 2.5 right now this lens uh, forms the uh, i mean uh, this eye lens focal length should be 2.5 cm right yes that is the maximum focal length of the human eye lens that's uh, okay for the objects which are very far but what if the object is very near near to human eye then in that case how this focal length varies simple this uh, eye lens is connected to some muscles right we have discussed these muscles are nothing but ciliary muscles the ciliary muscles are changing the radius of curvature radius of curvature then the, the, uh, due to this radius of curvature uh, change due to this change in radius of curvature focal length also changes so according to objects distance ciliary muscles changes its focal length then only we will be able to see all the uh, objects of all the distances right now one more question that right what if it fails to uh, change the focal length then what happens in that case simple we will get defects of vision defects of vision and this is also of two or uh, three types of uh, defects of vision we have and we are going to discuss so when this defects of vision happens is nothing but whenever ciliary muscles are failed to adjust the focal length of the eye lens then uh, objects either forms behind the uh, retina or in front of the retina in these two cases we cannot see object clearly so at that time we will get defect of vision so there are three types of defects of vision okay the first one is myopia myopia is also known as near sightedness why because myopia people can only see nearby objects but they are unable to see the objects which are very far so that is why we call it as near sightedness got it so in this case object uh, objects eye lens forms the image in front of the retina so here you can see the image formed in front of the retina so here in this case we cannot see object clearly and which it here in this case object is at infinity we can consider then only the all the rays are coming parallel here now the object is placed here so in this case also image formed behind retina right so he in this case also we cannot see object clearly but if you see clear if you see this third uh, ray diagram we have just changed object position from here to here right so at this particular point we can see object clearly but if we move it little uh, uh, more away then then also we cannot see so this is the exact point where we, behind which 
we can we can see objects clearly and more than uh, this distance we cannot see objects right so this distance is known as this uh, the point at this distance is known as a uh, far point this distance is is this point at a uh, this distance is known as far far point it is denoted by the letter m so now what how this distance uh, this far point is defined far point is the maximum uh, distance from the human eye lens where we can see the object clearly behind uh, behind uh, any distance we cannot see objects clearly right and <clears throat> in between this uh, l is nothing but least distance of distinctive vision within this range only we can see object clearly see here in this case object exactly formed on ret retina right so here yes we can see objects and here too object uh, image formed on the retina here too we can see clearly now here we need to understand that about myopia there are only few points we need to remember the first thing is it is known as near sightedness why because we can only see nearby objects and uh, the person which who is suffering from myopia cannot see far objects right and in myopia object uh, image formed in front of retina okay and also we we have far point in myopia right so this far point is nothing but the maximum distance from human eye beyond which we cannot see objects clearly and before behind uh, before uh, it we can see a clear uh, object got it and now the question comes that how do we uh, clear this or fix this type of defect of vision simple the problem is we cannot see the far objects right now we need to do one thing that we need to place one lens so the lens should be in such a way that it ha it has to form the uh, image of the infinite uh, the object which is at infinity in the nearby distance right so that uh, uh, that uh, was only done that will be only done by our concave lens right so concave lens gives a um, nearby image so concave lens gives a nearby image of the object which is at which is very far got it now how to find this image uh, focal length of this uh, lens simple we need to know one formula that is I, i'm just reminding you that 1 by f is equals to 1 by v minus 1 by u yes it is lens formula which we have studied it in our previous chapter got it now here how to find this focal length so here one point is that object is placed what is the purpose of this uh, what what is the purpose of using this lens when the object is at infinite distance okay it needs to form the image at a finite distance right v is equals to t now we need to find the focal length of this lens can we find it simply here we just need to substitute these two values in this lens formula here you need to consider this sign convention here for this uh, object distance it is uh, negative and also image distance also negative now 1 by f is equals to 1 by v is nothing but minus t minus 1 by infinity so this value is as it is negative and focal length of this lens is nothing but minus d centimeter what is this is how we can find the focal length of the on cave lens which is used to correct the my defect of vision myopia got it now the next uh, one uh, uh, second uh, defect of vision is hypermetropia this hypermetropia is known as far sightedness why because this uh, the person who is suffering with uh, this type of vision can only see the objects which are very far but he cannot see the objects nearby so this sighted this uh, type of vision is known as far sightedness now here you can see the diagram right the first ray diagram 
the object is placed near uh, to the uh, least distance of distinct vision. In this case, what happened? The ob image formed behind the retina. So in this case, whenever uh, I have already mentioned that, so if the image is formed before the retina or behind the retina, in both cases we cannot see object clearly, right? So this case we can we can't uh, have a clear vision of the object. But here you can see the object is play. We I just uh, shifted my object from here to here. But at one point, at one particular point, I can see object clearly. But if I just shifted this point towards uh, least distance, no, I cannot see the object clearly. But from this point, if I just keep on uh, moving it away, then I can see object clearly. See here, in this case, ob image formed exactly on the retina so i can see object clearly and also it is very far from the eye in this case also i can see object clearly right so what did you understood from this uh, ray diagrams here hyper in hypometropia image formed behind retina so we cannot see objects clearly and we can only see objects uh, which are very far from a little at a particular point right so that point is known as minimum distance from human eye lens where we can see till where we can see the object clearly. So before it, before it, we cannot see the objects, right? And this point is known as near point. Okay. In myopia, we have far point. In hypermetropia, we have near point. So near point is the minimum distance from the human lens where till where we can see objects clearly, right? And what will be the cause of this defect? Yes, there are some reasons. It can be either focal length of the lens. Okay, if the focal length of the lens is too long, then it forms the image behind the retina, right? But in myopia, if the focal length of the lens is too short, then it forms the, uh, in front of retina, right? So this is the difference between hypometropia and uh, myopia. And in this hyper, in this eyeball, okay, this eye lens becomes too small. Okay, these are the causes of hypometropia. Now the question is how to uh, fix this type of defect of vision. Simple. We need to use a lens in such a way that it has to form the. Uh, near uh, from the image of nearby object got it so for that we have a better option that is convex lens this is the uh, ray diagram of uh, correction of hypometropia here you can see this point right so here we have placed an object here in this case the object image is formed behind the retina right so here we cannot see but now i have only placed the object here i didn't change objects place but i have just uh, mentioned uh, placed a lens a convex lens right now what happened now this uh, this receives the light rays from this object and forms the image at very far like here i got the uh, image of this object right now this image works as the object for human lens right so this is how we can fix hypermetropia now the question is how can we find focal length of this hypermetropia again the point is here we have placed object at a certain distance right from human eye okay let's yeah here from here we have we can consider it now I have got the object image at infinity. So here I can uh, consider V as infinity and U as D. Okay, if we consider sign convention to both are negative. Got it? Now let's just substitute these two values in lens formula that is 1 by f is equals to 1 by V minus 1 by U. Now 1 by f is equals to what is V here? V is infinity and minus U. U value is nothing but here you can see U is minus D. So minus of minus D that is D, right? So
so 1 by f is equals to 1 by d here 1 by uh, f is nothing but d since it is positive you can confirm from here to here we got focal length as positive right yes so whose focal length is positive concave lens or convex lens yes of course it is convex lens so to correct hypometropia we need to use convex lens got it now the third uh, defect of vision is presbopia so presbopia is often ha happen uh, in elder people like right? so due to age the muscles around their eye got weakened so ciliary muscles can't function properly so they are not flexible to form the, uh, change the uh, focal length of the uh, eye lens every time so he, because of uh, this age aging issues uh, we can have we can uh, expect this phobia uh, type of defect of vision so in this defect of vision what's happening is people cannot see nearby objects okay it always uh, recedes away but here one more thing we need to uh, remember that presbopia people can also suffer from hypermetropia so we can consider that presbopia is uh, the people who is suffering from presbopia cannot see the far people uh, the far objects and also cannot see very nearby objects so can, they can only see the objects which is in in range so within the range only they can see the objects properly they cannot see the objects which are out of range right? so this is uh, a different uh, uh, than the other two types of uh, defects of vision which we have discussed but to correct this vision we need to use double focal length uh, bifocal length lens that means a single lens has to uh, show us has to show us the nearby objects and also at the same time it has to show us the far objects right so in order to uh, achieve this goal we have to use bifocal length which is the outside should be upper side should be made with concave uh, lens and the inside should be made with up the lower side should be made made up of convex lens so, so here in the figure you can see this upper side can uh, gives you the image of far objects and this in this uh, inner side this lower side gives you the image of nearby objects got it so this is how we can correct defect of vision and the next one more important uh, topic is that prism and yes here we need to uh, notice this angle of minimum deviation too first of all let's talk about prism what exactly is this prism simple prism is nothing but a transparent material which is isolated from the surroundings right so now this transparent material can be any shape for example let's talk about prism so triangular prism there can be multiple uh, prisms can be available in the market so among them triangular prisms rectangular prisms square prisms and whatnot so many prisms are there but for this purpose we are using triangular prism now this triangular prism we can uh, see the bottom and the base are both are tri in triangle shape but the sides we can expect the three sides so these three sides are rectangle or squares got it but the base and the top are in triangle shape here now you can see this type uh, this diagram where we are uh, viewing this uh, prism from the top angle okay so whenever light ray incident on this uh, prism then it uh, uh, enters and exit from the prism right since it is transparent we can see from the through the prism so here at first this point the light ray is entering from so it is air medium right so it is a rarer medium and this prism is a denser medium okay and again this air is again rarer medium so initially it is entering from rarer medium to the denser medium so that is why at this point it is uh, experiencing first uh, refraction and due to this refraction the light ray is bending towards the uh, normal okay and when it is exit uh, getting out of the prism it is again traveling from a denser medium to rarer medium right in this case 
light ray is bending away from the uh, normal. So here you can see the bending of light ray twice, right? So the light ray which is coming out of the prism is known as emergent ray and the light ray which is incidenting on the falling on the prism is known as incident ray, right? Now, this the side, uh, uh, these two sides, triangle two sides are making some angle with each other, right? This angle is known as angle of prism. Angle of prism. And one more angle we can expect that. Here, if you extend this incident ray and also extend this emergent ray, then this, the angle between these two rays is known as deviation angle or else we can say angle of minimum deviation which is denoted by the letter D. Got it? So this angle of minimum deviation is uh, varies according to uh, incident uh, angle of incidence and angle of emergence. For example, if I draw a graph between uh, incident ray, so this is D and this is I, okay, then this graph will look like this. Okay. At one point, this is a minimum, right? So angle of minimum is, angle of uh, minimum deviation uh, will be minimum when this angle of incidence is equals to angle of emergent. Only at this point, we can have a minimum deviation angle. Got it? Now, so if uh, from this, uh, so from this activity, we can also find the uh, refractive index of the material which is made up of, may, uh, which is uh, this, uh, from this activity, we can find the refractive index of the material, prism's material, that is N is equals to sine, sine, a plus d by 2 by sine a by 2. Here, a is known as angle of prism and d is angle of minimum deviation. Got it? And n is the refractive index of the material. Got it? So, this is about prism and angle of minimum deviation. Now, we are going to discuss the dispersion of light. What is this dispersion? Simple, we are again going to talk about prism here. So, when a white light en enters into the prism, then what happens? The la white light is splitting into different uh, colors. So, this splitting is known as dispersion of light. So, now I'll tell you what exactly ha is happening inside the prism. So, whenever it is uh, in rarer medium, Light rays, whenever when it, uh, when it is traveling in the light uh, rarer medium, the light ray is a white light is com combination of all the seven colors. Okay, all, what are what all uh, these colors? Bib Kior. B means violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So all these colors have the same speed in air and vacuum. So, whenever these colors are uh, moving with the same speed, then we can see white light here. But when it is, when, as soon as it enters a medium, then it has some refractive index. So, so, due to this refractive index, this white light splits, in, splits into different colors because all these colors have different speeds in the medium, right? So, this uh, here in the first refraction, all this light splits, and also in the second uh, refraction, this uh, again bends. Uh, as more uh, it uh, violet has less wavelength, and red has more wavelength, right? So since it has more wavelength, it bends less. But this uh, since it has less wavelength it it bends more so due to this bending we can see a spectrum of colors here okay so this process of this complete phenomena of uh, splitting of light when it is entering from 
uh, prism is known as dispersion. So we can write is the phenomena of splitting of one light ray, splitting of white ray, white light we can consider. Splitting of white light into spectrum of colors. So this is the definition for dispersion of light. Got it? And there are some applications or examples you can consider in from our day-to-day -day life. The very good example of dispersion is known as Rainbow, yes, it's very colorful, right? But do you know how exactly these rainbows are for, uh, forming? Okay, so at least do you know when you can uh, happen to see these kind of uh, rainbows? Yes, when there is a rain, then you can see as soon as the rain stops, you can see a rainbow, right? Here, what exactly is happening uh, is light rays coming from the sun are falling into these water droplets which are all present in the atmosphere okay then this water droplets acts like a prism nothing it is water uh, drop is nothing but a medium right water filled with a water medium this acts like this water medium acts like a uh, same as prism so whenever a white light falls on this so whenever a white light falls on this then what happens here, uh, it is a rare medium, right? Air medium, but it is entering at this point, it is entering into the water medium. So here you can see a refraction, first refraction. So as soon as it enters into the water bubble, you can expect two types or uh, two, uh, here I'm drawing only two uh, rays because the uh, smallest wavelength and the highest wavelength uh, light that is violet and red here very slightly they have uh, split it here but here but here the angle of incidence here is more than critical angle so at this point they will encounter total internal reflection so that these two rays automatically gets reflected into the same medium so after total internal reflection these two rays, not only these two rays, all the colors will get reflects, uh, reflects in the same medium. That pattern is known as total internal reflection, which we have studied it in refraction of light at plane surfaces. Now, in between this, you can see the other uh, colors like here, the pattern forms like with Dior. So, in between red and violet you can see the remaining colors so here at this point you can see second refraction refraction again and the, uh, whenever after first refraction all these light rays get uh, dispersed here okay now the pattern the arrangement uh, of phenomena are refraction first and then dispersed and then total internal reflection, then again refraction. So here the angle between the first ray and uh, uh, red uh, color is 40 degrees. But the red, uh, white color and uh, this violet is 42 degrees. So they, these two colors differ by 2 degrees, right? So this is what happening in one single molecule. Now this type of molecules are thousands of millions of water molecules are present in the atmospheres. So these all form a spectrum. Got it? Now one more important uh, phenomena is that scattering. So what exactly is had, uh, happening in scat uh, scattering this? For example, there are millions of, as we have discussed just now, there are millions of particles, atoms, molecules are present in the atmosphere, right? And 
sun rays whenever sun rays uh, fall into these atmo uh, particles then these atoms then these particles absorb light okay and vibrates so due to the, uh, after gaining the energy from light absorbing the light uh, energy then these particles vibrates and after uh, while vibrating it uh, re emits the light in all uh, directions with different intensities so this process of re emitting of light in all directions with different uh, intensities is known as scattering but these particles or the atom uh, is always absorb the light all the with all the wavelengths so, so there is one condition it only uh, absorb the lights after uh, checking this condition so the condition is that the light ray the which uh, the, the wavelength of the light ray which is falling on it should be at least comparable to their size wavelength of light should be uh, comparable or at least similarly equals to size of the atom or mo molecule okay so on this condition upon satisfying this condition only they will uh, absorb the light okay so the atom which is absorbing the light is known as scattering particle okay scattering center right scattering center and the light which is re emitted by this molecule is known as scattered light yes here it already written here is a scattered light right so this process of re emitting of light in all directions with different intensities is known as scattering got it so what are the applications of this uh, phenomena is nothing but there are interesting uh, uh, phenomena uh, applications of this phenomena so the first ring is a uh, blue color of the sky color of the sky and also the red color of sun during sunset or sun uh, rise and also color of oceans color of oceans now what is the, uh, here we need to uh, know two points that why the sky appears only blue yes sometimes uh, white too but most of the times it is blue color right why because atmo uh, atmospheres uh, atmosphere uh, very high above the earth contains new uh, oxygen and nitrogen nitrogen and oxygen molecules so these molecule size is very similar to blue colors wavelength that is the reason we can see uh, we can see blue uh, sky as blue color why because these molecules absorb only blue color and emits blue color too that is the reason and what about this red color uh, we, we can see the sky in red or orange lightish orange uh, color while uh, sunset and the sunrise is simple that whenever uh, sun uh, is setting or uh, sun rising this is suppose we can consider this is sun and when sorry this is earth and when sun rising sun will be here and sun uh, setting sun will be here right so here from here to here a sun uh, sunlight rays has to travel more distance so only the high wavelength light rays uh, can travel of uh, this distance and if the light rays have the light rays of a smaller wavelength will get scattering in different directions which are away from our eye so only these uh, light rays orange and red colors uh, white uh, red colors has since they have a high wavelength they only can reach our eye right so this is the reason for red color of sun in sunset or sun uh, rise and what about uh, if there is no scattering phenomena in the nature in the universe then what happens well, we cannot see sky blue color and we cannot see oceans uh, blue color and also we cannot see the sun uh, a uh, colored uh, red color or orange color so we can see all these objects as black okay irrespective of the time we can uh, see the sun oceans 
and not only these objects every object okay we can see only in black color so this is about scattering so guys so i hope i have considered i have uh, revised all the topics from this chapter very clearly and if you have any doubts or any kind of queries from this chapter please uh, do a uh, comment in the comment section and also if you uh, like this video then give me feedback too this feedback helps me help me to improve myself or else at least get to know what exactly you uh, want from uh, youtube or you from my channel right and also uh, if you uh, like the video and if you understood the topic then subscribe the channel got it and okay guys and thank you and we'll meet in the next class with one more important and interesting chapter that is electric current full chapter revision so till then keep learning and bye guys